Hi everybody and welcome back to To Be Like Christ. In today's video, we're going to talk about where we find our satisfaction. In John chapter 4, Jesus is on a journey up to Galilee, and he tells his apostles that he wants to go through the country of Samaria on his way. So, during this journey, Jesus gets tired and he sits down by a well. His apostles decide that they're going to go into the city and they're going to buy some food. So they leave, Jesus is at this well, and a woman from that country comes up to him with a water pot and she's there at the well to draw water. Jesus asks the woman, will you give me something to drink? But what we find is that Jesus' intentions are revealed after this conversation continues for a little while. He's not so much interested in talking about the water that she can give him to drink. He says, if you knew who I was, you'd be asking me for a drink. And I could give you eternal water or living water, he says. And if you had that water, you would never be thirsty again. While he's having this conversation, Jesus' apostles come back and they've got their food and they're wondering why he's talking to this lady. The lady then leaves and his apostles come to him and they're like, here, we got this food, eat up. And Jesus says to them, I don't want it. He says, I have food to eat that you do not know about. And his apostles are kind of like, did somebody bring him food while we were away? Jesus clarifies a little bit and he tells them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. So what is Jesus doing in this text? The text tells us that he was tired And yet when water is offered to him and food is offered to him, he says, you know, I'm not really that interested. I think Jesus is teaching a very simple lesson, and that is that you cannot find eternal satisfaction in physical things. These two events, buying food and getting water from the well, would have been things that happened every single day. Because as you and I know, food doesn't satisfy you forever. When I go and eat a huge meal at a restaurant or someplace like that, I walk out and I'm like, oh, I'm never going to eat again. And then five hours later, I'm like, feed me. It's the same when you drink water. Uh, You may drink a bottle of water and two hours later, you need another one. And I don't think it's a mistake that God created us that way to remind us that if you're going to find eternal satisfaction or even long-term satisfaction, you're not going to find it in the physical world. But the sad thing is, there's a lot of people who have never learned that lesson. When it comes to seeking out satisfaction, a lot of people are still looking at the world to get it for them. Some people look to sin. Some people look to going out on Friday nights and finding some kind of a satisfaction there, only to come around to Monday morning and be wishing for the next Saturday or the next weekend because this one didn't give them any kind of lasting satisfaction. Some people go to addictions, and so one day they may get their fix, but the next day they want it again. But one thing that I think is really interesting from this text is that Jesus' two examples here, water and food, aren't sinful. It's really easy for people in the church like myself to look at sin and tell people, oh, don't go do that. You'll never find satisfaction in that because it's wrong. But just because we can avoid things that are obviously sinful doesn't doesn't necessarily mean that we are searching for our satisfaction in God. One of the dirty tricks of the devil is to get us to involve ourselves in good things and the blessings that God has given to us to the exclusion of the better things. Let me give you some examples of some good things. And this list is certainly not all inclusive, just things I threw off the top of my head. Uh, Things like video games. Nothing wrong with video games. It can be wholesome at times. Golf. Maybe you golf every Saturday morning. You're out in the beauty of God's creation. Nothing necessarily wrong with golfing. Uh, Being out on your boat. Taking care of your lawn. Working or being on Facebook. None of those things, if you saw any old Christian doing those things, you'd be like, sinner. They're all blessings, they're all good things. But are we finding our satisfaction in those things to the neglect of the better things? There's good and then there's better. And I think that this is something that the church really needs to look into. And I think the balance of our time will really reveal where we as the church are seeking our satisfaction. So the good things are those things that are blessings. God has given us the ability to do them, things that we enjoy, but don't necessarily flow back to the glory of God or our uh, work for the kingdom or the furtherance of the kingdom. The better things would be things that are flowing back to the glory of God. They're building up the kingdom. So what does the balance of your time look like? What percentage is in the good things? 
and what percentage is in the better things. Jesus is ultimately teaching these people in this text, you're not going to find your satisfaction in the good. It doesn't matter how much you love to golf. It doesn't matter how many times you tell your wife, man, there's no place I'd rather be than (laughs) out on my boat fishing. Jesus says, you will not find your satisfaction there. So don't put all your time there. Put it into the better. Because it is the work of God that will satisfy you in this life and your soul in eternity. So my challenge to you and to myself is to look at that balance of time. And you may be able to see right off the bat, wow, I put a lot of time into good things, but they're not necessarily God-glorifying things or things that have any value in eternity. I could put more time into the better things. You may look at that balance and say, hey, you know, I'm I'm doing okay. (laughs) I got a lot of the better in there. My challenge to you and to myself would be uh, to get more of the better, get more of the God-glorifying, kingdom-upbuilding, eternally valuable, because there are always more souls to save. There's always more work to be done in the kingdom. And at the, at the end of it all, you're not going to come before God and say, man, I wish I had more of that good. You're going to say, I wish I had more of the better. So even if you think you're doing pretty well, we can always do better. And that's my challenge. Think less of ourselves. Think more about the kingdom. Thanks again for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Like the, uh, like the, thanks for watching again. Uh, Subscribe, like the video, comment if you have any comments down below. I'd love to hear some discussion on this topic and ways that we could improve or maybe you think I'm wrong. Tell me about it. See ya.